All right, one of the most common questions I get in the comment section is, how did you start painting? When did you start painting? Why did you start painting? So I'm gonna talk about that today. All right, so I just got high-speed internet so I can upload really long videos. So I'm gonna do this podcast style, not a lot of editing, so here we go. Um, so I wanna start with the beginning. Uh, as far as like growing up as a kid, you know, I drew occasionally, uh, like drawing just like most kids. Um, and I always took art classes in school, but I wouldn't say that I was exceptional. Uh, I didn't really stand out as an artist. I was more of what I would call like a creative kid. You know, I just like making things out of wood. In particular, when I was young, I used to build little boats and little things like that out of balsa wood. And they would be like scratch buildings, so there was no plans or anything. I would just go to a hobby store and get balsa wood. And then I don't even know, I guess I had some kind of idea in my head and I would just build these little boats. Also, I remember other things like building little houses or log cabins uh, using toothpicks. And, um, and then I'd take cardboard and make uh, roofs for it and paint it with tempera paint and stuff. So I was mostly just a crafty kid when I was young and primarily focused, focused on music. I loved music. And um, so that was my real passion as a kid. Uh, I wanted to learn how to play guitar really badly. So that's kind of uh, what I did starting at set, the age of seven. I started taking guitar lessons and I didn't really connect with the music. There were, you know, it was mostly um, just like nursery rhyme type stuff. And I wanted to be playing The Who or The Beatles or whatever, uh, Elton John, stuff like that. Anyway, so, um, but I did stick with it. I quit the lessons, but then, you know, as I got older, like around seventh grade, eighth grade, you know, I started learning how to figure out songs by ear, you know, listening carefully at, the, at that time it was records, you know, you'd put the record on, listen, and then try to figure out what was going on. Um, and that process, that's how I learned. Um, you know, I quit the lessons and then I just learned by just, yeah, listening to records and just trying over and over to hear what was going on and replicate what was going on. So uh, the musical journey went through my 20s, um, you know, was writing music, playing in bands and stuff and didn't really do anything artistic or creative uh, that I can think of. Yeah, I was mostly really focused on music. Um, in 2001, uh, my daughter was born, Emma was born. And at that time, I was still playing music, but, um, you know, I couldn't, I, I guess because she was little, you know, I just couldn't really play music in the house. And I did feel like this need for some kind of creative outlet. Um, so what I did was I actually got into um, building a model train set up for, like, for Christmas. When I was a kid in New Jersey, one of my fondest memories is... Um, we had my grandmother's brother, we called him Uncle Francis, he would come and visit us and in the winter time, like over a Christmas holiday and there'd be snow and everything and he liked to walk. So uh, we would walk uptown with him and I remember there was a travel agency, <clears throat> travel agency that had this really cool alpine scene with a little train going around the mountain and stuff, very Christmassy. And, Anyway, I used to stand in front of that window and look at that little world and get lost in that world and really enjoy it. And um, so, uh, you know, Emma was born and it was, it was like, I think the first Christmas. And I thought, oh, I'll build like a little, you know, a little scene or whatever, a little train scene, like I, and build a little train model. And I really got into it. I had no idea how to do it. So I went to the library and I got books on like building train models. And um, so I did that and built all these little houses and it was like a little town. The strange thing was it wasn't a winter scene. It was like a desert scene for some reason. I don't know. Anyway, um, so I really enjoyed that. At the end of building that train model though, I thought, where am I gonna put this thing? And I still wanna be more creative. I still wanna make more. I wanna continue to be creative, but if I keep making these train layouts, yeah, where are, where am I going to put these things? You know, I don't have the room for it. So I needed another creative outlet. About that time, for some strange reason, I, I got this idea that I wanted to have real oil paintings in the house. And, um, and uh, the first painting I wanted to do was of Cape Cod, which was a vacation spot that I went. And, 
This was 2003 at this point. This is when I started. It was August 2003 It was when I started painting. And the reason I started was, yeah, I wanted to have artwork in the house, but also I was missing our summer vacation to Cape Cod, Wellfleet, South Wellfleet on Cape Cod, which was always a really special place for me. And uh, we weren't going because when we were out there in 2001, September 11th happened, uh, we had literally landed and were there for a couple days and then September 11th happened and um, in fact the airport Logan that we flew out of Boston just opened up and, for us to be able to fly home there was literally nobody on that flight so we didn't travel for a couple years and I was really missing it and I felt like I just kind of want to get into this process of doing a painting of the place to remember to have it on my walls whatever so uh, I went to Aaron Brothers and I got a 14 by 18 inch panel and I don't have an image of that painting unfortunately. If I do I'll insert it but I don't think I do. Um, and um, so I went and got some supplies and I got a Grumbacher starter kit and I started painting and I think I spent like I would paint at night in the garage which has now been converted into my studio but it was a garage at that point and um, and I spent probably four consecutive nights between four to six hours on it. And I was like painting every blade of grass into the dunes. It was a picture of a little cottage on the dunes and I was putting every blade of grass and it was basically, I was just replicating a black and white photo that I had and then I was colorizing it with what I imagined the colors would be. Um, I was obsessed and but i also realized i needed more information like there was something about the painting and it's like it doesn't look like a painting it looks like a painting of a photograph and i thought all right i need more knowledge so of course you know from my previous experience with like the train models i was already really good at going to the library and finding any information i needed uh and that's what i did so i went to the library and i just i checked out some books by emile Groupe. those were really good um, old from like the 1970s, uh, but I looked at the Emile Groupe books and um, just read them over and over again. And then also I got out a video series, which many people have asked about. I've tried to figure out what this video series was. It was like five um, VHS cassettes. I, I cannot find who it was. It was a woman, it was like the 1980s, but the, the, the fundamentals that she was teaching, that she were teaching, that she was teaching in these videos was really solid. Um, you know, there was exercises on simplifying shapes and uh, value exercises, all kinds of stuff. Stuff that I, maybe I'll do on this channel. Because I remember all the exercises, but I have not been able to figure out who the woman is. Um, and many people have sent suggestions and it's just, yeah, not the one. So. If I ever find out, I will put it here on this channel let you guys know because I do think that video series was really helpful. Uh, so anyway, so I started really devouring books and looking at a lot of art too, particularly Edward Hopper. You know, um, I was really drawn to paintings with sunlight. So the Edward Hopper paintings were, were um, and also too, because Cape Cod was such a special place to me, um, when I looked at Edward Hopper's paintings, like he was painting Truro, he lived in uh, North Truro, which was one town from South Wellfleet where we used to stay. So there was an immediate connection with that part of the world or you know, the subject matter that he was painting. It felt familiar to me. I love the sunlight in his paintings. And um, so, and then somebody actually, I remember asked for, a, uh, I wanted a book of his oil paintings. And um, I got a gift for Christmas of his watercolors. And I was kind of disappointed, to be honest with you, but in retrospect, I, I think I like his watercolors. They were all plein air. I think I like them better than his oil paintings. They're super loose, really good paintings. If you ever get a chance to check out Edward Hopper's watercolors, take a look. Um, I think he almost paints sort of like a oil painter uh, in a way, his, oil, his uh, watercolors. Very loose, very cool compositions. Love that stuff. Anyway, um, so yeah, so here we are, 2003, I'm going to the library, I'm getting books out, I'm looking at videos, trying to loosen up, and I'll insert some pictures here, um, you know, along the way. <laughs> but uh, so some of the books were saying, all right, you need to get out and you need to paint from life, or you need to do still lives from life. 
paint from life as much as possible. And I'm like, all right, uh, that sounds good. So I'll do that. So I got a plein air set up and I started going out. And the first plein air I did was in my dad's backyard because I was nervous. I didn't want to like set up out in public and whatnot. So set up in his backyard. He had kind of this like uh, a little lily pad pond and some trees and whatever. And I thought, all right, I'm going to give it a go out there. And it was kind of like, I felt like it was a disaster, but at least I broke the ice. Um, and then around that same time, I thought, all right, I'm going to set up a little still life, almost like something Cezanne would do. So I set that up. That also just, I felt like the composition was kind of wonky. Everything was kind of too low and I didn't have any idea about composition at all. So I realized around that time, 2003, yeah, I needed some, I needed some more information still. And so I started looking around at that time. I could, you, I think, yeah, I was, I don't remember. I think people just had websites around that time. You know, there wasn't, the internet was still just kind of warming up. I don't remember YouTube being around at all. So, but I do remember like searching for oil paintings and I found Tim Horn, uh, who's a painter in Marin County, and then uh, Randall Sexton, who at the time I believe was in San Francisco. Uh, They're both local guys and really liked their work. Randall Sexton, super loose uh, stuff. And then um, Tim Horn had just really beautiful light in his paintings and still does. You can check out both of those painters. Um, but, uh, so I decided to take workshops, like weekend workshops. I took a workshop first from Tim Horn. It was like a weekend workshop. And then I took one from, uh, Randall Sexton. And that was in 2004. So still in that really beginning stage of learning how to paint. And, uh, and I remember just feeling like my work was so tight. I couldn't loosen up. Like I even remember writing on my easel, like loosen up, you know, like, you know, use a big brush. I would just like put all these things to remind myself on my easel, like literally write them on my plein air easel. And at that point I was using a French, a full box French easel and used that for like probably the first five years of plein air painting, maybe even longer than that. So anyway, um, so here we are, yeah, still in the first years of painting. And, um, I didn't feel like, I felt like I got a few things out of the workshops, but I realized though, mostly was that I was just gonna have to get out as much as possible and figure this thing out for myself. Um, and that's kind of what I did. So um, I started painting a lot around town and I was drawn to buildings and cars and stuff like that. I would paint in sort of industrial areas where there wasn't a lot of people. Uh, like early mornings on weekends, I could go to industrial areas and like paint things like, uh, just like buildings and trucks and random things like that. Um, so that would be up until 2005. So painting about two years there, still really tight. I kind of understood how to separate things into shapes, uh, really focused on that. And, but then I was like, well, how do you loosen up? Like this all feels just so like puzzle pieces and everything, which is not bad. It could be appealing, but I wanted more, it just felt too tight, uptight to me. I wanted more vitality in the work. So at that time, I think I found Carol Marine's work online and she was doing little six by six inch paintings and um, posting them every day, kind of, you know, this daily painting thing. And I thought, all right, maybe I'll get into that. You know, I'll commit to painting every day. And I did exactly what she did. I got a blog set up, which was like basically a web blog, I guess it is. So it was like a, um, you know, I was, uh, posting a painting a day on there explaining, you know, the subject matter, whatever little notes about the painting, I put that in there. Um, and I really focused on doing simple little compositions, six by six only, really strong brushwork. That was the whole goal with this. I was like committed, I think, to 60 days, I think I was going to do, try to do a painting every day. And I did that and I posted them on the blog with a link to an eBay bid sort of where you could bid on the painting. And I think that instead of doing it for 60 days, I think I did it for six months and I've sold over 80 paintings of these little paintings for about a hundred dollars a piece. It was mind blowing to me. Those were my first sales that gave me a lot of confidence. Um, and yeah, it was around 2006, but also too, I grew so much through that daily exercise. At about six months though, I felt like when I tried to paint a 12 by 12, it was frightening to me because it seemed too big. And so at that point I thought I can't do this daily thing every day doing these tiny paintings, even though I was making some money doing it. I just felt like, you know what? I got to start painting bigger. I want to start painting bigger. 
So I would still occasionally do a little six by six and post it, but I wasn't as committed. So about that time, um, I went back out, like I was, I still was plein air painting occasionally. Uh, and also too, to give you some context, I was working construction at this point. So I had sort of a flexible schedule, basically could get out, out to paint two days a week, um, about maybe occasionally on the weekend. So I didn't have a lot of time for painting um, because my daughter was young, I was working, it was challenging. It felt like the growth was really slow because I didn't have enough time to really dedicate to it. Um, but about this time, around 2005, I was really thinking, yeah, I don't want to do this construction forever. I would love to be able to do, be a painter for, you know, as a job. Even though I didn't know what that would, I had no idea how to go about that. So anyway, um, so, <laughs> and there's a lot that happens between 2003 when I started and 2007. After that, there's a lot of growth in the very beginning. After that, it not so, uh, I won't say not so much, but the growth was, was slower. So we'll get to that. All right, so where are we up to? We're up to 2006 when I was doing all these little paintings, um, which led to another show, a group show um, in Pacifica uh, called 5050, where you do 50 paintings in 50 days. Again, little six by sixes. And I was like, God, do I really wanna do more six by sixes? You know, I've done so many of those and I'm trying to paint bigger, but this show is a good opportunity. And I thought, all right, I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna do cityscapes because they scare the heck out of me. I don't know how to do those, right? So I thought, all right, I'm gonna commit to 50 days of painting cityscapes. So I went up to the city, shot like 500 photographs on multiple days, just, and then edited them, you know, cropped them, experimented, trying to figure out how to compose. And then I did 50 paintings and I believe like half of them sold which was great. That was really encouraging. I think ultimately almost all of them sold. There, I still have maybe 10 out of those 50. So I realized, wow, people like these paintings of San Francisco. This is cool. And it's a fun challenge. So that was again around 2006. Um, and then in 2007, um, I went, uh, Tim had, re I thought, you know, maybe I should get into a gallery or try to, ex you know, explore gallery representation and stuff, but I had no idea how to do that. I asked Tim Horn, who um, at this point we become friends, we painted occasionally, and he's like, there's a gallery in San Francisco called Studio Gallery, and you might be interested, they're kind of a small gallery and, and starting up, and you might be interested um, in, you know, we could go in there and talk to him. So I did, I went up there on Polk Street in San Francisco and I went in and Jen was sitting there and I came in and I, I remember saying, you know, uh, Tim Horn sent me and um, I'm a friend of his and and she's like, well, I can put you on the list, you know, and when we do, sh we have open callings to do shows, you know, I'll send you an email and you can send in stuff and submit it and, and you know, maybe you'll get into one of the group shows. And um, this is the beginning of 2007, maybe the end of 2006. And I just felt like, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. And so I, you know, signed up, but I never really pursued it. I think she even sent, you know, I was on the list. So I got the notification for certain shows. I just didn't really, I didn't really do it. I, I think I had a different idea of what I wanted. I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. I want to be in a gallery or something. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. So I didn't really pursue it very much um, at all. Like I didn't participate in any of the shows. Like I never sent stuff in and, and kind of forgot about it. Uh, then in summer of 2007, uh, Tim Horn and I went to um, back east to Maine and uh, went to Monhegan. Now he stayed on Monhegan the whole time, but I had family in Port Clyde, which is nearby. So I went out, I stayed a night in Port Clyde with Tim and we kind of painted around that area. Then I believe we went out for like three, I went out to the island for three days, painted out there. Wasn't super inspired on Monhegan. There were painters everywhere and it was cool to go out there, but I just didn't feel like, I just didn't feel as inspired. I, I, so I didn't even paint, I think I painted one painting out there, maybe two. And I, I just, you know, I thought, uh, you know, anyway, Tim stayed out there and I went back to Port Clyde. So in Port Clyde, I um, met up with family and hung out and I did some paintings there. And then in the future, every August for the next 10 years, went to Port Clyde and painted. Didn't even know that Andrew Wyeth actually lived in town. I was staying in this little, it's a tiny, tiny place. And I was staying in a place called the Ocean House. And I remember like, I was walking out and Andrew Wyeth was walking in with you know some family or whatever he would occasionally come into the ocean house which was like an old style boarding house with like 
ah, it looked like the 1940s or 1950s, a big communal dining area. Really cool. Like you don't see that stuff anymore. And and now it's I don't think it exists anymore. I, I don't the owners of the owner passed away and I'm not I'm not sure what the status of that is, but I just remember feeling like there were so many painters in Maine, so much creative stuff going on, super inspiring. And then it was like seeing Andrew Wyeth there, it got me inspired to look at more of his work from Maine and from New England and stuff. Well, mostly Maine and Chats Ford and Pennsylvania. Uh, but very, very cool. Super inspired by that trip in 2007. And the plein air paintings that I did in Port Clyde, I did one of the lighthouse and I did some others. I felt like it was next level for me. I'd gotten loose, I'd loosened up from all those little tiny paintings I did. These were nine by 12. So when I got back, I just said, hey, Jen, at the gallery, I said, hey, some new work from, you know, I just went to Maine and, you know, just thought I'd say hello and send you some, you know, images. And she was like, these are great. She goes, uh, I have a show right now called People, what was it called? People, Places and Things, something like that. It was just like a kind of anything goes kind of show. And she's like, I got a show right now. Would you want to participate? And I said, sure. And she's like, do you mind if I come back by and pick out some work? I was like, no problem. Like, yeah, sure. And she's like, what, you know, what's your schedule? And I was like, I'm flexible. Come over whenever. She did. I had boxes of paintings, these plein air paintings. She's sorting through. She's like, how many of these can I take? I was like, take as many as you want. And she's like, are you serious? And I said, yeah. And she goes, all right. When did she ask me? She's like, are you trouble? Like, no, are you? Oh, I remember it was like, she's like, are you difficult? And I said, I don't think so. <laughs> so I don't know. And I said, take what you want. Like, so she took 10 paintings and they were in the show. None of them sold, but then it got me into the loop with them. I participated in some other shows. It took a while for something to sell. I think probably at the end of 2007 or maybe even 2008, one of my cityscapes sold and then things started progressing from there. So I was pretty much just working with their gallery and they had a show at the end of every year um, called Tiny where you paint. Uh, six by sixes they have to be like six by six or under seven by seven inches and under five hundred dollars and so basically what happened was i participated in that every year and i think it was like three years of doing that the first year we sold maybe you know three or four next year it was like 10 or whatever i just remember there was a certain year where i sold eight we sold 18 of these little six by sixes and then one year 36. And she kept, and then also I was on a postcard too. Um, my work was one, on one of the promotional postcards for the show. And I think after the year where 36 of these little paintings, she's like, do you want to do a solo show? And I said, yeah, that sounds great. Now, right at this time, I started getting sick with Crohn's disease. And I got really, really sick. And they lost their lease. And so they shut down for six months. I went through all my savings. I was like, uh, I wasn't painting as much. I was really low energy. It was a dark, dark time. Right at a time when I had actually also quit my job to start pursuing art full time. It was, yeah, and that dark time lasted. I mean, there were bright spots in there, but it, that dark time lasted for years, like three years maybe. So I did have one gallery at that time that I was working with. It was a gallery called Collector, uh, which was in uh, Berkeley. And I'd done a few little shows. I don't think I'd been sold very much, maybe a painting. But they had this, un this unusual opportunity to open up a gallery at San Francisco International Airport. And they had some of my work um, from, uh, from a show that I did. And they said, hey, do you mind if we hang on to your work and put it in this little satellite gallery out in the United Terminal at, San Francisco, at SFO? And the United Terminal had been completely renovated. And so it was all nice out there. And there was these little pop-up type or little um, shops out at the very end where people were sitting waiting for their flights. And I was like, why not? You know, and that was kind of my philosophy. Anything that in the beginning, any opportunity to show my work, I would say yes. Um, and that included some like shows in churches and whatever. I mean, a lot of these things that I didn't really get any sales out of them, but it was, all of this was good experience. Now I will say that the gallery out, the pop-up gallery out at the airport, that was a surprise. Okay, so here I am, I'm really sick, and I don't remember the year, I'm thinking it's around 2013 at this point. And I'm really sick, I can get up and maybe work for an hour or two, 
And so I started doing all these little paintings, like mostly uh, San Francisco paintings, like probably between six by six and 10 by 10, kind of small. And I could tackle that. Like I could get up and paint those. And I'd like go back to bed and, <laughs> oh my God. So, and what I would do is I live very close to the airport to San Francisco International. So, um, I remember I would, they'd say, do you have more paintings? Cause they were literally selling out, which was awesome. And so, um, it gave me some motivation and gave me a bright spot, something to focus on during that time when they were still trying to figure out what was wrong with me. I'd lost weight. I'm six, one, I'm just over six foot now. I was six, one, six, one and 165 to 170 pounds at sort of that range. I was down to 135 pounds at the end when I went into the hospital. So it was, yeah, it was um, really bad. And I won't get into the whole Crohn's thing right now because I've talked about it in previous videos, but um, they were still trying to figure out like what's wrong with you, you know, like, and um, uh, they finally did figure out and got on medication and stuff like that, but it took a while to get back to normal. Like, like I said, almost two years to the point where I felt normal again. Uh, so anyway, but back to collector. So what ended up happening, I said yes to that, started bringing them, or giving them paintings um, after they sold out what they had. And it was really convenient for me too because the airport is like 10 minutes away. I would literally drive into the airport and they would meet me, uh, let's see, on the upper level, which I believe was, um, was a departures, no, it was arrivals or something, I don't know, anyway. It was whichever level the guards don't yell at you to you know keep going. So I pulled up and I would, you know, and, and I would say Sky was the woman who ran the gallery and I'd see her there. I'd roll down the window, hand her a box of paintings. We'd chat for a few seconds or a few minutes sometimes. And then off I'd go back home. And that lasted for like the whole time that studio was closed and looking for a new place to, uh, like a new gallery. And um, so, I, you know, I finally got medicated and I was starting to improve. Um, a, a, we sold like a lot of paintings. I don't remember how, but between 50, 75, it could have been 75 paintings. It was a lot that they sold, mostly small stuff. So it really did help, but I was going through, I did go through all my savings. I was like, I had pretty much nothing left. And, um, but then studio found the present gallery. They have beautiful spot and they're like, do you want to be, I think I was the first solo show in that new spot, if I remember correctly. And Jen's like, we got a spot, we're slated to open, I think it was in the fall. And she's like, do you wanna do a show? You are still down for that? And I was like, yeah, definitely. So that was a motivator and a real struggle because I, like I said, I was still just kind of coming out of the whole Crohn's thing. But I did, I put that show together and it ended up, thankfully it did really well, um, which gave me that financial boost to keep going. Um, and this is, I guess, the point where things kind of slow down. Like I, I think from there on, I was making money, um, doing these, you know, doing shows. And I did, like I started showing at Elliot Fouts as well up in Sacramento. And so I had income from the paintings. Uh, and I was able to, you know, I was still cutting it really close. Like I would run out of money and then I'd do a show and then I, you know, then the money had run down again. It was very stressful. And one time there was a show I did up in Sacramento that just for whatever reason didn't sell very well. And I was like broke and I was like, what am I going to do? You know, like I can't live like this. It's too, too stressful. Um, and so that was the time where I ended up throwing a little art party at my mom's place, ended up selling like $4,000 worth of paintings, which kept me going a little further. It just like so many years of just kind of that up and down, which was just not, a, I just got to a point where I was like, I don't want to live like this. I can't, it's too stressful. So then I thought, all right, well, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. And that was about three years ago. And I just, the original idea was just to share you know, what I know, because I felt like when I was starting out, it was so, such a struggle to get information. A lot of people don't like looking through the, you know, through um, like the library or they don't learn so well from books. And I thought, you know, I got a lot out of those video cassettes when I started out. And um, I thought, all right, I'm gonna just do some videos, but I don't even know what I'm gonna do. I thought maybe I'll do like plein air vlogs or, anyway, so I just got started with the channel and 
kept going with that and it's as you guys some of you have followed along you've seen how it's evolved and it'll continue to evolve and i think i just posted in fact the last video was video number 400 and when i started with videos i was like all right i'm gonna probably have to post a thousand videos before i see any kind of revenue from this and that's kind of true <laughs> so i do it because i enjoy making videos i enjoy um you know, the interaction with people in the comment section. I've met some really wonderful people so that have become good friends through, the, through YouTube and through my painting, um, you know, through this channel. So um, that's kind of where I am right now. So now I'm doing one big show a year, uh, which is at Studio Gallery. Uh, I'm still at Elliot Fouts as well, and also at Show Gallery in Berkeley, but I, I don't have as, just because things have been so busy, I haven't brought them new work in a while. Um, but I'll continue my relationships with them. I have good relationships with those galleries as well. But the main focus has been on just this YouTube channel and um, and developing a way to sell uh, artwork direct, you know, through through Instagram and stuff like that. So the journey has been, you know, it's constantly evolving. But I do feel like have what I've learned is that I'm much happier now that I have multiple income streams. Like the, the YouTube brings in a little bit, which is enough to kind of allow me to only do one show a year. When I was doing a lot of shows, uh, you know, you start ending up getting influenced by what sells. And I feel like you know, artistically, it can be stifling to depend on selling paintings for a living. So it's nice to kind of diversify your income so it frees you up creatively, which is really important to me. Um, I found that now that I can own, that I can do one show a year and, um, and I can just, then I get back into the exploration and experimenting and trying stuff. I don't care if paintings fail. I really do love, uh, exploring and experimenting and making discoveries to me that's the thing that 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 excites me the most so i feel like you know that, that i have a good balance at this point um and so i'm excited about the future to be honest with you i'm very excited i'm excited about you know what's going on here on this channel i, I love getting comments people you know letting me know that they're getting inspiration from what i'm doing to get out there and paint which i think is awesome it makes me so happy so anyway, that is all I've got for you. I think, I mean, it's enough. I know it's enough. But uh, so if you've made it all the way to the end, I'm glad you're still here. Uh, and I wish you creative success. And the thing is, it's a rough road or it can be challenging at times. Enjoy the journey, be patient, and do not quit. That's what I'll say. All right, so stay creative. I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.